what is going on y'all welcome back to putting up the pom-poms we are a mother daughter youtube channel where we showcase and discuss everything about our natural hair and all the topics in between okay but in this video we are doing a amazon wig install okay so if you are new to the channel welcome welcome it's nice to have you i am shantae and to all of my returning subscribers hey mama hey bestie hey friend it's nice to see you once again do not forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the like button if you would love to see more videos like this so I can kind of know where to gear my content towards. But anyways, I am prepping my hair for this Amazon wig install, right? Now I have these plaits in that I've worn for about two weeks and I'm just not ready to deal with my natural hair right now. So here is the wig that I purchased off of Amazon. First of all, it is a curly wig with a bank right because i am not good at lace fronts so i stick to what i know and where i feel like i'm more confident at and that's usually wigs that don't require me to have to mess with lace and that's just my preference so of course they come with all these little goodies in the bag for you earrings tattoos all a bunch of stuff that i usually don't use and i kind of just throw out so we're gonna go ahead and skip all past that so here is the wig as you can see it is red, it is burgundy, it is beautiful. I love the color. Right now I'm inspecting it and I'm a little confused because it only came with like one comb. And I was just like, where's the rear comb? Ain't no side combs. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right off the bat that this, this wig is not very secure. Make sure you tighten up those adjustable straps, especially if you have a small head. I am very much big head friendly around here, so if a wig don't fit my big ass head, I know something is wrong, right? I know that they, I don't know who measurement they used, but it, it was not it. So I'm dry fitting it on right now. And I'm wondering what the hell did I just get myself into? Okay. Amazon is tripping on this wig right here. So I go pull up the receipt to make sure I ordered the right wig. There ain't no way I ordered this wig. They obviously sent me the wrong one. The color is correct, but these curls are not it. So this is a picture that Amazon had. Yeah, out here catfishing, absolutely disappointed. So I go through the reviews and I see this baddie right here and I'm just like, damn, it looked good on her. So I was like, let me try to achieve what she did. And she was honest and she said that the wig looks nothing like the model, but we gonna make it work. So I immediately start raking through all the curls, okay? Because they were all kind of settled in there for you so they don't lose their shape in the packaging. Um, so I'm trying to loosen it up, which of course made them extremely big and huge Afro amount of curls on my head now. But I felt like we were getting somewhere. I was like, okay, we might be getting somewhere, but I don't like how much hair is on my head. It definitely is looking a little too wiggy. And usually when a wig is a little too wiggy, where it's just like a pound of hair on your head, the best solution is to shear it. So I go in and pull out my shear scissors so I can kind of thin out the hair, right? So with these shear scissors, what it is, is it's not a, you know, a regular scissor. It has like these little ridges in it. So it's not a clean cut of hair. It's like cutting the hair and thinning it out. I bought these a couple years ago and they, I'm addicted to them. Like I can definitely go scissor happy, um, with these thinning shears, I definitely get real scissor happy. So I have to be careful not to like overcut or ex be excessive with the thinning. So I started out with the bangs because I felt like the bangs were just a little too thick for my taste. And I have a big forehead. So I felt like, yeah, this was just a little too much hair for me. So I also realized that when I brush and kind of clump the curls together, it does kind of bring down that frizzy nips of the wig. So it doesn't look as big, but it still was a lot of hair it was still a lot of hair so i am working through the bangs and i'm gonna do the sides i didn't really touch much of the back i like the length of it it sits right on my shoulders um especially with the hair being so curly and i like that i didn't want to take away from the length i really just wanted to thin it out just a little bit and what i do is i take a nice big section and i cut down the shaft of the hair maybe three four times and then brush it out and i'm using a boar bristle brush to brush out the excessive hair that i'm cutting out and i try to make sure i brush it out real good because you don't want to walk around and have sheds of hair all over your clothes while you're out and about running your errands, going to work, wherever you tend to wear this wig. Now, I do want to talk more about that Amazon picture, okay? 
Amazon, I need I need them to get it together. I hate that they use other women's pictures and they don't have permission most of the time to use other women's pictures. And the wig is nothing, absolutely nothing. Like the girl's not even wearing the wig. Like just get you a, like you could have used the girl's picture that was in the review, that gave an honest review and had the actual wig on. They could have used that picture. And I still probably still would have bought it because she looked damn good in that red and she had red too a lot of people that purchased this hair bought the natural hair colors like the brown and the black i think they even had a platinum blonde on there and after i kind of got done playing around with this red one i'm kind of inching towards trying that platinum blonde now because summertime's coming up and for some reason during the summer i love a platinum blonde hair color So after I worked my magic for about 10, 15 minutes with those thinning shears, I think I got it where it doesn't look like too much hair on my head. And I kind of figured out the curl pattern a little bit. It's now time to beat my face because I don't know what it is about a wig and a beat face, but they are just, they just go hands in hand. So I'm going in with the Clinique moisturizing primer because I have a dry skin during these winter months. And then I also go on top of that primer with the ELF's, it's the new like power grip primer. And I use this pink one and I love it. I really do love it. This is like my fourth time using it since I bought it. And you're supposed to kind of like put it on and it gets a little tacky on the skin. And that's supposed to help with holding in the foundation, which is great for me because I always experience my foundation transferring a lot of times. And I don't know if it's my primer or my setting powder. So who I just go ahead and double up on everything. Now I'm going in with the Juvia's Place Concealer and I'm going in with the color 12, which is the shade closest to my skin tone. And I'm going in with this nice little buffer brush to kind of like pat everything in place. I wanna go for a nice airbrushed look and the best way to do that is to go with brushes and to kind of like lightly pat the makeup in place don't do like a like stroke it across just like a nice little pat this is sped up so you know it looks like i'm kind of like smearing it but you don't want to smear do not smear okay so once i have that in place i'm then going to go in with a contour color now since it's winter time and i'm in my winter shade right now i had to change up my contour color and i'm using the color pop stay fresh concealer don't remember the color of this one because it's rubbed off. It might be a little old and expired, but you know what? We're going to just keep on moving and ignore that part. So I'm applying this under the cheekbone, around my chin, and of course the forehead. And I also do my nose contour as well. I'm going in with this small little nose contour brush. It makes it so easy to get into that like small curved area around the eyes and stuff. And then for everywhere else, I'm going in with this big buffer brush and doing the same technique that I did with the first concealer. I'm just patting it and kind of like lightly blending it into my skin. And it brings so much warmth back to my face once I contour. And I realize that I need to get my tan back on because I refuse to use this contour color for the entire summer. Now I'm going back in with the concealer that is the same color as my skin color. And I am undercutting my contour. I've been doing this lately. It wasn't something that I used to do before, but I love how it really accentuates my jawline and it just looks good to me. So I'm gonna go with it. Now I'm going in with an even lighter concealer and this is also by Juvia's Place and I believe it's in the number eight and my skin color is in the number 12. And I just apply a small dot right in the corner of the eye, the middle of the forehead and the middle of the chin. This time I'm going in with a beauty blender and and I am patting it in place, just dabbing it right there in place. I'm not going to move from that section because I want it to be very bright in that area. Now it's time to do the eyebrows and I am going in with the Morphe's Brow Pencil. And this is in the shade Chestnut or Mocha. I believe it's mocha. Now, before with my eyebrows, I always use like dark brown, jet black colors. Um, but I've slowly started leaning towards the lighter colors, like the brunette color shades, because I just love how natural and feathered it makes my eyebrows look. 
Now we're going to set everything in place going in with the Beauty Bakery flower. And I go in with this nice dome shaped brush and I kind of just pat it all in place everywhere that I put the lighter shades of concealer. And that's going to be my under eye, my eyelids, forehead, nose, where I undercut my contour as well as the center of my chin. Once I am done with that, I'm then going to go in with my bronzer and I use the Fenty Beauty and this is in the color Mocha Mommy. She is definitely my summer shade, but I don't have another bronzer on hand. So I just try to go lighter with this and I am addicted to bronzer so I can definitely overdo it on bronzer. So I try to be very light handed with it, but I just love how warm it makes my face look and the shade that I need to be other than the shade that I am right now. Now I'm going in with my eyeshadow and I keep it pretty bland. I'm very much browns and neutrals on the eye. Um, I used to play around with all the colors like two, three years ago, but now I find myself doing nothing but smoky eyes. And I go in with a brown, I pat it all in place right on the eyelid. Then I'm gonna go in with a clean dome brush to uh, Go ahead and blend out the edges and move it up towards the brow bone so we have this nice smoky effect and all i'm doing is like this windshield wiper technique where i just go back and forth until it is blended and very much seamless you should not see where the eyeshadow begins or ends if you do you didn't blend it very well then i'm going in with a matte light shade in the corner of my eye and this is also going to make my eye seem wider and brighter and we love it now i'm going in with a very much store-bought basic maybelline mascara because i'm going to add eyelashes or lashes anyway so i don't feel the need to have like a $30 mascara the $10 and $8 ones work just fine for what i need them to do now I'm going in with my blush. This one is also by Juvia's Place. It's a duo. And I went in with the lighter pink. I usually do that orange one, um, but I feel like my face is already warm enough. So I went in with the cool pink so it doesn't look too much, right? And I can definitely be heavy handed with blush too. So I try to be light handed with that as well. Now I'm going in with this gold shimmer highlight. I have always used a gold or a pearalized looking color for my highlight. Um, it always complements my skin tone so well. It works great and I love how effortless it looks and just uh, makes my face look so dewy. Now for the lips, I'm going in with the eyeliner, which is by Juvia's Place. And I know you're probably like, sis, they make eye lip liners. Yes, yes, I'm aware. But for some reason, the lip liner is the only one I can find in stock. So, you know, make it work. Now, this is a nice neutral brown and I'm going in with this warm brown lipstick by Minted. And this one is in the color Peach Please. And it is gorgeous. It is a beautiful neutral color. And with that dark paired lip liner, it is always a win always i can never not look good in this lipstick now it's time for the lashes now for my lashes i go in with one strip and i cut it in half yes i'm cutting it in half with some nail clippers mind your business if i want toe jam on my lashes that is for me to be concerned with now this is pretty much how we're going to put them on i place them towards the end of my eyelash and i'm going in with this duo eye glue and this is in the color black i never like the clear it always just never looked good on me the black makes it look like i have an eyeliner going on which i get to skip the eyeliner steps so yeah I've been using that. Now I apply it directly on my lashes because it just makes it easier for me. And I just place it right on top and I just kind of pinch it just a little bit. Now, as you can see, you can definitely tell between the lash and my lash. So I go in with the eyelash curler and I go in with the almond shaped ones because I have this nice long almond eye. And do you see the difference? Hold on, let me zoom in for you. Do you see the difference between one? Like one, you could definitely see that's a lash and the other one, it looks a whole lot more seamless. If you couldn't tell the difference, it's probably because you're the problem, not me. 
Anyways, moving forward, there we are. I am almost done. Now it is time to apply the finishing powder and the setting sprays. So for the final powder, I'm going in with this NYX translucent powder and this is going to help with my oil control because I end up sweating because of my high blood pressure and I don't want to be shiny. And I apply this all over and this is also going to get any of the excess flour by Beauty Bakery that I put on there, blend that on off. Then I'm going to apply my Clinique because she's been that it girl for me as my finishing spray. And I do two because since we're doing two primers, might as well do two finishing sprays. And this one is by Too Faced and I go in with a fan to blow that all down. Now I went ahead and used the earrings that they gave me with this wig, which is surprising. I usually don't like them, but it was actually working and I was surprised. Now taking my hair clips out so we can go ahead and finish putting this wig together and immediately I have to readjust my wig because again it only came with one comb and it was moving everywhere. I'm going back in with my boar bristle brush to clump up those curls and give them some body yaddy yaddy and that is pretty much it. It is crazy how a beat face can really transform a wig from mm, maybe to god you girl that that's you and I really love how full and beautiful the curls are like I feel like once I've worn the wig for maybe two or three days the curls kind of loosen up a little bit and they won't be so tight and it'll definitely be a look right okay okay so that's pretty much it for my get ready with me I'm going to go shoot some content because I have like five outfits to do but thank you guys for joining us on another tutorial do not forget to hit that subscribe button sweetie come join the family and do not forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video so I can bring more videos like this to you we greatly appreciate having you guys be blessed and be safe